Um, all right. So did you catch Rampage? I mean, I saw pretty much all of Rampage. I mean, I got I'm, I'm out of town right now, but um, I, saw, I I think I missed the first four minutes because we got stuck in traffic getting here. But um, so I saw the whole show and I saw the second half of SmackDown. It was weird because where I'm staying, um, they actually went head to head, you know, because it's, it, it was um, the uh, it was five to seven or seven, seven to nine for um, uh, Rampage and eight to ten for, for SmackDown. So I'll, I'll go home and watch the rest of SmackDown tomorrow. Uh, so. I mean, I I thought Rampage was good. The Julia Hart bump scared me. Um, you know, really scary. Um, the uh, the mood of things. So one of the things I saw a clip, um, you know, from you know on social media of the Muda return before I watched it on TV, and it sounded so loud on the clip I saw. And then when I watched the TV version, it didn't sound like like some of the SmackDown pops sounded louder. And it's like. Um, for whatever reason, it didn't sound as loud at all. I don't. I don't trust the sound on any of those tape shows. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, they didn't. They didn't get. And I mean, I mean, I know from people who were there who were telling me, "Oh my God, the pop mood of God, it was incredible." And I'd heard it. I knew it was. So, but then on TV, it didn't feel incredible. But it's still the great Muda, and it was kind of sort of historic. I'm glad they did it. Um, I don't know that it means. Um. I mean, I, I think it would be cool to do, you know, the great Muda Sting and Darby in a six man tag on the Rampage show as the great Muda's final match ever in the United States. I don't think it's going to like draw a giant, but I think it's some I think it's something I, I'd like to see it. And I guess Sting is going in January to Japan to team with the great Muda. Um, the first time Sting's been in Japan, I don't even know how long. I think it's been decades. So that's kind of cool for him. Um you know, I mean, like Muda can't do much, but, you know, he is an all time legend and he is retiring. And, and so, you know, it's kind of cool that, that you get that. Um, and again, like in a tag, you can, you know, he does that really quick drag and screw and he just figure four. And, you know, I mean, he knows what he can do. It's not a lot. You know, he's got, you know, his hip, his knees, you know, I mean, he's hurting a lot. Um, you know, you know, knee replacements and everything like that. You know, I don't think you're going to see a moonsault anymore, but um, yeah. I, I will. Um, I have a couple of just thoughts on, on the show. It's you. You and Brian will run it down tomorrow, and and SmackDown as well. But House of Black, without Malachi Black, they need to do something else with these guys. I think. And it, it but, just. But, but buddy, buddy Matthews, he's a great wrestler, but he is lacking something, which is the same thing in WWE. Um, and I think putting him in a, in a group helps him a lot. Like he could be in a tag team. I think Brody King is great, but you know what? I almost think that like house of black without Malachi black, it's almost like, I'd almost want to like, just do something different with yeah, these guys. They should. They completely, I'm sure that this was just kind of finishing off whatever they needed to finish off, but it just seems silly. If they're the main guy leaves announcers, don't say anything. And the fans and just like, yeah, and they can't say that. You know that that thing is that does bother me in the sense that, you know, when you have these things that the announcer should say and they can't, you, you kind of feel like you're not being played fair with. Yeah, you know, like like you have a an obvious question, and then boy, you know, and let's face it, I mean, I get the Punk and and Kenny Omega and Young Bucks thing, right? Because of the legal issues that they just don't want to say anything. Okay, with Malachi, it's like, you know, you you need to tell your you can, I, I feel you need to have that the announcers need to tell the audience something yeah. even if it's a worked story you have to tell a story like oh he got run out oh he's injured we're not going to see him for a year whatever the story is there's got to be a story and that's one of the weaknesses in, in AEW is there'll be things that happen and they just Tony doesn't like to talk about them so you know the idea is is that you don't know and then the viewer is just like well, where, where's Malachi Black I mean why isn't he here? You know, wasn't he feuding? Wasn't he just feuding with Sting like a week ago? And they were building up this big thing. And, you know, um, oh, he's got an eye infection. You know, he could say that, right? Sting yeah. blue mist, you know, something like that. Do something. Um, but by doing nothing, you kind of feel like I I, I, I think that that's like um, I think something that's, that, that as, a, as a whole, the company needs to address is what would an average fan be thinking when they watch this? And what questions would they be asking? And have the announcers answer those questions rather than where well, we can't discuss it, even if you have to make up a story, because wrestling for the last 60 years, 70 years has been on television. 
about making up stories if you have to make up a story. And um, the truth is better than making up a story, especially now when people know better. But you, you know, you, you, there's been a lot, some of it out of his, out of his control where things have happened, where they just don't address it. And a lot of times with injuries too, where they just should. And it's just kind of like, it's, it's why, you know, again, it's where people will go, well, the storylines don't play out or they're not there. There's the storyline holes. It's like, yes, there are, you know, like this, there is an absolute, absolute. Where's Malachi black is a storyline hole. You know, it's like, okay, he got blinded at the pay-per-view. So say that, Say Malachi Black's got an eye injury. We don't know when he'll be back or whatever, he, or he's gone, you know, like uh, WWE would, you know, we won't be seeing him, in, you know, in any, I don't know. I just think that there's ways to address it. It's weird. I'm, you know, because the whole, a lot of the situations that's, that's been going on, there's been a lot of weirdness with AEW and its roster and people, you know, leaving and suspended and wanting to go and, you know, others not wanting to go. And it's just a very tumultuous, it's actually a pretty tumultuous time combined with the fact that they never say anything they don't tell you anything they don't tell anyone anything um because that's and 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 again like if it was a sport and that's what i always think like if it was a sport and somebody had a contract situation or something like that would the announcer say it on the air during the game yes they would and wrestling should wrestling announcers should be like to me they should treat the audience like sports announcers treat sports, not like carnival barkers treat mm-hmm. carny mark fans. Mm-hmm. And I think that the more you get away from that latter thing, the better wrestling is. But wrestling does have certain roots to it. And I, I just like to see it be, you know, again, treat the audience, you know, don't don't keep the audience in the dark. And and they do way too much. Action Bronson. Hit the ropes just, a couple times. Hit hit some shoulder blocks. Broke a clothesline. And then, he was cool. Yeah, they won a match, and uh, it was it, perfect for exactly what they should have done. And uh, exactly. I, I don't imagine that he's gonna be back regularly. But if he comes back once a year to do this show, I think it's totally fine. Agreed. I thought that match was was totally perfect. It was like a plus, you know, like for what it was supposed to be. Uh, Jungle Boy against Phoenix. So we didn't get to see the whole match, right? Well, there was um, there was uh, the, so, uh, some some minutes where the picture in picture went to straight commercial, but we saw, you know, the thing with Jungle Boy and Phoenix from from our standpoint. I mean, uh, people in the UK will have a you know a different situation, or or the ones who watch on Fight. But usually, like I always say, like don't put your high spots during the commercial because they don't have the effect. And this was the perfect example. I'm watching this stuff. These guys are just dramatic beating the hell out of each other and it's during commercial break and we're not hearing the crowd and i'm just going like oh man i wish to get this commercial you know thing back going and they would come back and you got the latter stage of it but i think this match i thought the match was great but i think the match would have been much better had i had i watched it on the uk feed uh, or the fight feed than than on the you know television feed and i was i was very frustrated that they were doing great stuff that I could see, but I couldn't get the crowd reaction to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, um, but in some ways it's a necessary evil. I mean, like WWE, usually when they do that, they shut the match down and they don't do, you know, and they're taught not, don't do anything big, but here, you know, that, you know, and it's just an AEW difference in the sense that they play for the live crowd and they don't shut the match down when they're off TV. Um, but it, you know, it's, um, it can be frustrating when you're doing really really cool stuff off TV and you can't get the crowd reaction and you don't get the full feel of it. But I thought they did, uh, I thought they did a great match. I thought the announcers put it over great. Um, it was weird watching it because there's a part of me where I go, God, they, they, they beat Phoenix so much and he's so great. But at the same time right now, I mean, like if, okay, here's your match, you know, where you're going, you know where everything is. Who do you book to win? And it's Jungle Boy. You know, you know what I mean. He and put Phoenix kind of... over at the end, big time too. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And Phoenix got the trios title and everything like that. But it's just like that sort of like, oh man, they, they, you know, Phoenix is his his the thing about him is he is so great, so they can use him to to have great matches with people who they want to put over, and um, you know, but at some point, you know, from like a credibility standpoint like um you know the jungle boy beating him wasn't as big a win as it could have been if if phoenix 
was presented bigger, I suppose. But I mean, this these guys were out there. I mean, it's two baby faces. These guys were out there to go out there on this show and give you that four star match on the show and give Jungle Boy a big win and and protect Phoenix as much as you can with the congratulations at the end. And then you do your other angle. So it was I mean, I get what they what they achieved, were trying to achieve. They totally achieved. Um, it was interesting that I was surprised Christian came back so quick after surgery to haunt Jungle Boy because now you got to do. I mean, like you got to do like seven months of this before you, Jungle Boy can get back at him, and um, that's a lot. I don't know, you know. Um, well, I just have to watch, you know, where it goes. But it's like it was two months to be one thing, but seven months, man, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um... And then I guess we saw you were mentioning why Jungle Boy didn't win the match and Christian goes away. It sounds it seems like Christian's going to be a part of whatever they're doing because he was back he's, on TV. He still should have won the match, though. But I, I don't you know, I don't know. Um, it's like I said, like if, if it was, you know, Christian on TV every week harassing Jungle Boy, if it's two months, that's fine seven months man um you know it's gonna be hard to keep it fresh but um i, I you know whatever i would i would i wouldn't have brought him back this quick and um and i actually would have jungle boy move on to completely other things you know i mean yeah do his feud with luch source but move on to other things maybe maybe become like a championship contender and you know with his big match for the title against whether it's mjf or or, you know, whoever, Moxley or Jericho, if it's ROH title or something. But have him do this big match where he's about to win the title. And then, like in six months. And then have Christian come back then and fuck him. Mm -hmm. And then when Christian's ready, I, I would rather do it that way than have him and Christian going at it. You know, week after week after week when Christian can't even wrestle anyway. And you can go with Luchasaurus, you know, for a while uh, as Christian's guy. Then, you know, was he going to bring in another guy and all this? I just assume... You know, I would just take Christian off until right before he's ready to go and then bring him back in a real hot thing. Because now if he, like, screws him later in a hot thing, it's like he's been screwing him. He's going to screw him constantly for months, and it's going to, you know, it'll, I'm afraid it gets old before he can go for revenge. And in a segment that probably only bothered me and a few others, uh, Marvez interviewed Jericho, and we had the thing with Daniel Garcia where he wasn't celebrating – and he was kind of off to the side, and, J and and the JS was was celebrating. And then they came back to the next match, which was Sammy and Kingston, and Jericho's right there, and no one says, "Hey, w what's going on with Garcia?" Because it was probably edited in. But that's that, that was like I was like, ah, that would that would have been perfect if they would have put yeah, that yeah. in. That would have been great. But it's probably yeah, no, it was probably I, edited I, I, last minute. Okay, but that that's a very fair thing to say. Um, because it would have, it, it, it is the question that you're asked and is what the, again, that what should the announcers have done then they should have said, Hey, what's, what's the deal with Garcia? Yeah. You know? Um, and then Jericho says, he's fine. He's fine. And leads to Wednesday and wherever they're going with the story. So uh, yeah, yeah, you're, that, that's, that's a very fair, that's a very fair thing to say. And then, um, you know, Sammy and Eddie was, uh, you know, I mean, they did the reverse decision. It's part of an ongoing storyline of of making the refs look stronger after the refs have been look, you know, look weak. And, um, you know, we'll again have to see how, you know, it's how it plays out long term. Um, I thought, you know, it, would, it, 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 it was one thing in the sense that doing three straight matches on Wednesday with those finishes was really off putting. But then when it was. You know, when I saw what they did for Rampage, you know, later that night, it's like, okay, it built to this. It's part of storytelling. It's fine. Do you think you know? it's going to be a good storyline, though, to put a magnifying glass on the referees? I think it's a good I think it's good for the company to um, have more a more credible product without the bullshit of. Oh, you know, the referee's decision is final, even though we have instant replay in every other sport in the world mm -hmm. and, and all that. I think that that stuff, it just makes me, it's like, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's been part of wrestling for, for, for 50 years behind the referee's back and all that. But, um, 
I just feel that it's also, it, it dates the business in a lot of ways. You know, it's like, it's, you know, everybody else has evolved from this and we're still doing this because we always do it. You know what I mean? And I think like I'm watching other stuff, like if I'm watching UFC and, and all this, you couldn't really do this. And it kind of just, it's kind of. Except if you're John Jones and you got long fingers. <laughs> yeah. But um, I mean, we'll have to see how it plays out. Um you know, I mean, it could also be one of these things where they do it for three weeks and they forget about it because that happens in wrestling all the time, too. And then it's like, all right. Um, Didn't WWF back in the day do something with Bob Costas and George Steinbrenner around referees or something? I don't even remember. I may be I may be conflating like two or three different things that they did, but I remember there was something about the referees that they did sort of similar to this. But it, from a psychology standpoint, right? Doesn't that kind of kill a lot of the heel stuff? If you absolutely, it does. So it makes you have to tighten up your booking. But people have done that. I mean, it's like it can be done. Sam Mushnick did it forever. Sam Mushnick, they, he, the, you know, Sam and Larry. I mean, they, 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 you know, they ran wrestling in a certain way, and it was very successful. Granted, it's another year. It's forty years ago, fifty years ago. But their thing was is like in a real sport, you would never make the referees part of the sport. They didn't even allow you to do, you know, uh, double, you know, the, the the stuff behind the referees' back because they had two referees and tag team matches. Mm -hmm. Because Sam's idea is, is that you, if with one ref you can distract the ref in a tag match, and I don't want to make the refs, you know, the refs don't draw me money, and also, you know, he 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 would use local guys as referees and you know like one of the refs was like i don't remember what he was like the head of you know the you know little league or something but it was like a, he was like a distinguished sports official in real sports and they used him as a referee in wrestling and it's like we don't want to we, we can't make him a clown he has to do real sports so the referees were like they would do one their one referee bump every three to five years in a big match to build up a rematch and it always worked because they did it so sparingly. Like if they did it when, when dusty came in, they did it on every show and tenants shot down and, you know, like way down Yeah, because, because they were, you know, they had taught people one way and these other guys, dusty came in and did it the other way. And we knew it was going to go down and it did, they couldn't help themselves. They have to do everything the same way that they do it in other places. And, you know, but it, it's, it's like, you can do it. They made it work for, you know, for decades of, of the ref, the ref was a guy who was respected. The the you know the wrestlers don't punch the ref, or they're going to be, you know, aside from DQ'd, they're going to be fined and suspended. And you just don't, you know, you know what I mean. You wouldn't, it, it, it you know again, it's just the way that they did it. You know, it's not like it's that it, it's the only way or it's the best way. It's a way, so you can do it. I mean, I mean, it's proven you can do it. It doesn't mean, um, you know, but again, what AEW will do, what Tony will do. I don't, I don't know. I mean, Tony's such a big fan of ECW and, and where they never DQ'd guys and guys could get away with really wild and crazy stuff. So a lot of like where people complain, it's like, well, this is just what ECW did. And which again, not saying that's the best thing in the world, but that's what he grew up on and that's what he likes. And so that's what they do. I mean, I would like to me, I, I, I don't like incompetent refs and I don't like um, using the ref too much. But if you do it every now and then um, to build a rematch, I think it's fine. Um, but just don't, over, you know, just don't overdo it. My only feedback on the Jade and Diamante thing is if they did this in Miami, where Trina is from, it would have gotten over so much bigger. But uh, a lot of people, I know a lot of wrestling fans had no idea who Trina was. A lot. Yeah. A and, lot. and then that really hurt this. Plus, I don't think that she was that interested in it, like compared to like Action Bronson, where you could just see he was chomping at the bit and he did. She his... didn't even really have a thing to do. Though. She just stood there and then there was a little bit of a slap or a pie face and that was it. Like they didn't really even give her anything to do. But like she did it. It just didn't. It, I don't know. It didn't like I mean, again, like um, <laughs> it's, it's funny. We had what was it? Four rappers on the show. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. DJ Wu Kid is not technically a rapper, though he may have done has done that. But I think he's better known as a DJ. But yeah, he's a hip hop DJ. Yeah, and then but so you had three rappers on the show, and I think that you only like 
one celebrity is cool and you focus on the one celebrity, I mean, you don't want to over celebrity the show either, um, especially when it didn't mean anything. Um, I know I, like Action Bronson helped the show without a doubt, you know, it's something different, um, which was good. And then um, Fabulous, you know, he was he was there, you know, I mean, it's not. Do you he, remember he, when what was wasn't there a story back in the early gosh, was this early 2000s, mid 2000s? Where he was going to do something at, on a WrestleMania with John Cena? I don't remember. I think so. I think so. Yeah, I don't remember that 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 off the top of my head, but I think you're right. Yeah, I I thought I thought that there was talk about that like back in the day, um, that there was like supposed to be a rap battle or something. It was like WrestleMania 19, but uh, yeah, that that I mean that's how that's how far back Fabulous goes because he's been a. <laughs> He's been pretty big since, uh, you know, back then. Um, and then uh, Hangman Page won the Battle Royal. Uh, so he's going to face Moxley in Cincinnati. I, I couldn't even think of anybody who would have been a secondary winner in this match. Like It was clearly built for him to win this thing. Yeah, well, to get him back going, you know, he's kind of been, um, you know, I mean, he was in the trios title match and everything like this, but... Um... Yeah, I mean, you could have gone root with Roosh. You know, Moxley's already wrestled him once, and they had a, a absolutely tremendous match. Shocked, shocked me how good it was. Yeah, um, but if Roosh throws Adam Page out of this match and wins, and wins, it's a, it, it's a flat finish. I'm just like, okay, what, 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 what's happening with Adam Page here? <laughs> yeah, no, no, Adam Page was the guy. To, Adam Page was very clearly the guy to win the match. I hope when they do the match itself, obviously, this is not the time for Adam Page to win the championship. Um, I think that, um, again, the way that they do, um, you know, there's, there's different ways they could go, um, but they don't like to do DQ. So I think that, you know, um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, if you're looking at it, whose time and everything like that, it's Moxley's time to win. Um, but I, I always want to keep Paige strong because I really think that he can be champion again down the line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so just don't like ever – Beat him. But there's a lot of guys in that in that thing, you know. I mean, MJF I think is going to be have a championship run. I think um, Jungle Boy. I think you know, not not in the next year, but I think that he can be, you know, in that picture. You know, um, I think that's what they need to groom him for. We've known that since day one, but now it's getting closer and closer. That's one of the reasons why I want him to get away from Christian, not forever, but for a little while, just to, you know, kind of get him in that in that situation and maybe you know ricky starks is another one where he's got some momentum maybe get him up to the championship level but i i mean i wouldn't put the title on him either right now i mean it's moxley's time um danielson i do think danielson uh, should get the championship at some point too yeah you know, he's another he's another one where people are kind of ready for that and and um that would be you know again you know timing's everything and um you know and there's no rush you know but at some point and then in the main event, it was an unsanctioned match between Ricky Starks and uh, Powerhouse Hobbs. And I guess for me, I, I don't understand why it was unsanctioned because Hobbs clearly dominated their first match almost to the point of where it was like a near squash match. And then they do this match, which Starks wins. So I don't know if they're setting up a third match or if this is the blow off, but I was I was just kind of confused what was going on in in this feud here. Um, I don't know. I well, especially since the lights out match was never announced until the last minute. Um, you know, it wasn't like it was they they built it up for three weeks. Um, you know, with promos or story or anything. All of a sudden, it's like like a lights out match, which is like the AEW specialty thing that they you know always delivered something really strong with. Um, and those two guys went out there to do that. Um, but it wasn't. Yeah, you, you know, like. The first match, how did the first match build to a lights out match? Well, I don't have an answer, and nor did the announcers explain anything to me why I should have an answer that, that an answer that I couldn't figure out. So yeah. Um, why was it a lights out match? If they were gonna do a rematch, why did they do such a one sided short match the first time, other than, you know, that they were you know, I mean, yeah, that's all the, that's again all valid all valid questions. And and it's one of those things where, you know, they they didn't give you any answers as to why that initial reaction that almost everybody would have, you know, on why, why they're doing this. And it looks like we're getting Moxley against juice non title next week. 
Yeah. You know, Juice has been a guy who, I mean, you were at the Cow Palace. I mean, on that day at the Cow Palace, it was like Juice is going to be one of the biggest stars in this <laughs> business. He just, he was so over fantastic promo, so much momentum. <laughs> I mean, it's funny when they announced Juice and Moxley because it's like when Juice and Moxley feuded in New Japan, like that was a big deal feud. You know what I mean? And now Juice is just like a guy, you know, even with the heel turn that, that helped him a little bit. But even then it's sort of like, you know, he didn't have a great G1. I didn't think he didn't, you know, he had some good matches, but everyone does, but it wasn't like he was one of the stellar performers in G1 or anything like that. And it's like, you know, it's like it almost feels like, okay, it's a name wrestler that Moxley can beat as opposed to, oh, my God, Juice Robinson's wrestling Moxley Wednesday night, which if it was a couple of years ago, that would have been my reaction. Yeah. So, um, but, yeah, it's something different. Um, you know, that's all. It's something different for Philadelphia. And, um, you know, Philadelphia's a major, major market. They'll have a, a decent crowd. Um, this, you know, it'll be the lowest, I think, since they've been to Philadelphia. But... Um, it's still going to be a decent crowd and, and, um, you know, they, sh I mean, the, the juice Robinson, John Moxley matches that I've seen were very good. So that's very promising. Hey, if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.